All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the brewery. My name's Adam and this is Adam Makes Beer. And today you are joining me from Sonderbrunn and we are gonna be looking at our CIP skid and I'm actually going to be CIPing a section of hosing that I used for a blow off line from a recent fermentation. So in order to do that, I need to walk you through the CIP skid and then how the whole thing is lined up. Now, CIP is simply clean in place. Typically in the past, and you've seen other tutorial videos where I've done like the version of like a belly wash, some people might call, where I hook up a pump to the bottom of a tank and then up to the CIP arm. I put hot water in the tank or water in the tank, add chemical, and then I circulate it like that. This is not how a CIP system works when you have a skid. It's a little bit different. You have your reservoirs here, you have your acid, caustic, and then parasitic acid over here. And one other thing that is very, very cool, there's also an inline city water source here. So when you follow this bottom line right here, you can see that there are valves to the bottom of each one of these chemical tanks. And so actually I'll close this because I'll, I'll just show you right from the beginning. I'm not sure if you can see this. Can you see me down here? Maybe, let me go see. Can you see that? Oh, you can. Sweet. So down here, we have one of the ports for the CIP system. I'll get you a better shot on this, but I, I have the CIP supply coming in through the top here and it's looped and then here's the return. Something you'll be able to see when we do the close up. There's also a valve right here that acts as a bypass. So I can create a loop with this when I'm not using it, or I can just have it open to this full recirculation back to the tank. So how the recirculation works with this line is, will have generally a source, whether that be water, parasitic, caustic, or acid. And this is all going to feed this pump down here. You can see it comes in, boom, right here, and then the control for this pump. This loops in, comes out, goes back through the CIP system behind the tanks, and then comes out over here, boom, okay? And then that loops back around and the return for the system is a pipe that runs right through here. And that's why you're gonna see valves returning to each one of these tanks, okay? So what I can do is, when I initially wanna rinse this system, which is what I'm going to do right now, I can open city water. I open that slowly because I have a lot of pressure going through there. You might be able to see water hitting the drain right here. That water is rinsing the line, coming back through here, and then dumping to the drain. I've already rinsed this, and so really this is all the rinse that I need with it. So I'm going to slowly close this because I don't want to hammer that water system. And also, small note, there is a backflow preventer right here, all right, just so I don't ever have any chemical going backwards or anything like that. So this is my caustic CIP pot. And so I'm going to open the source right here and turn on my pump. And we're gonna see water start coming through here. We're gonna be flushing the water that's in that loop out and down the drain. The CIP tank right now, because we haven't used it overnight, is only slightly warmer than the city water that I pushed through the lines but I'm gonna keep my hand right here and wait to feel that warm up. It's warming up now. So I'm gonna close the dump line while simultaneously opening the return line. So now what I have is I have a loop. I'm pulling chemical out of the bottom through the face of the pump. It's returning through these two tanks. I'm not returning it to acid. I'm returning it to CIP, okay? Back here, you might not be able to see me for a second. This is a steam can you see me? This is a steam heated CIP rig. And as we've talked about before, cleaning is all about temperature, flow rate, chemical concentration, and time. Those four things. So that's what I'm tracking when I do this. So right now I'm raising my temperature by turning the steam on. I will track that with this temperature probe right here and this flow rate meter right here. So I have flow rate checked 
I have temperature checked. I need to check my chemical concentration. And then I will set a timer when all those things are appropriate. Let's run over here and look at this little sheet. Let me see if I can bring it over here. Okay, so right here, uh, we have a list, a CIP guide. And for each individual thing that we clean in here, it has, well, we know times so like COP pot, I'll say 20 minutes on caustic, 20 minutes acid, five minutes parasitic acid. What I'm doing right now is I'm doing inch and a half pipe and hose. So that means I need a flow rate of 150 liters per minute. I'm at 238, so I can actually slow that down, but it's fine either way. I'm going to track my temperature. And when I get into my temperature range, I will cut my steam and then I will set my 20 minute timer. But I'm forgetting one thing. I am also going to check my chemical titration. Okay, we'll do that here in just a second. And here's the loop that we're working with. We have the source point right here where you can see on the top, it says CIP supply and CIP return. And I'm doing a real simple clean here with just this blow off hose that I use, but I'm connecting it up. I'm making sure obviously that my valves are open and that my bypass is closed. So that means I'm getting the full strength of flow through the hose and then returning back to the CIP pot. Can you see anything in there? Uh, no. And I want to try to show you. <laughs> All right, listen, I am testing the limits of these gloves that are far too small. But I also want to avoid people being like, oh, you're touching things you shouldn't be touching without gloves on or whatever. So, you know, I mean, you do what you do. See? Boom. So I need to ch test my concentration. So I'm going to pull a small amount of caustic out of the bottom of my tank. I'm going to rinse this real quick, though. Oh, my gosh. Is this a joke? Am I still recording? I dropped it. Okay, so per my caustic testing kit up top, caustic titration kit up top, uh, I need to get uh, five mils off this tank. So I will crack this just a wee bit. Can you see me? Oh, maybe you saw me, maybe you didn't. I opened up a valve and harvested a little caustic out of it. Drop a little into the drain. So we hit our five milliliter. Perfect. And then we use two drops of green cap. There's instructions inside the manual as well, but this requires two drops. One, two, and we shake that around. And then for every drop of this, you can see that it turns super bright pink, almost purple. For every drop of this is a quarter of percent of caustic. One drop, stir, two drops, stir, three drops, stir, four drops, stir, five drops, stir, six drops, stir, seven drops, stir. Okay, just went clear. It's magic. So seven drops, which means that I am at 1.75% for my caustic, which is absolutely in range. So I know that my caustic is strong enough. I know my th flow rate is correct. I know my temperature is going to be correct. And then just time now. So I'm still waiting for this to come up to temp, but when that is done, I'm gonna set my timer for 20 minutes. Okay, so as we have this blow off line cleaning right over here, Keep in mind, this is just the simplest way that you can use the CIP system, right? It's just a straight loop and it's returning on itself and you track time, temp, concentration, everything like that, right? Flow rate. However, one thing that's different when we're running these full tanks is we have to utilize a different pump, okay? And so what we would normally be doing is we would be Let's say for argument's sake, we're down here. And you can see that we have another line. This is actually for CIP skid one and CIP skid two. 
the two is on the other side. So if we were washing a tank, how this would be different is this would still be the supply, but this would end up hooking up to a CIP arm on the fermenter. So the issue becomes how are we returning chemical that is collecting in the bottom of the fermenter back to the CIP skid. That's where we would use just a standard pump, okay? And so we would just use a standard pump, connect to the bottom of the tank and be pumping back to the return arm, okay? So one thing that that creates is that creates a situation where we have to make sure that we are returning chemical back to the skid at a suitable enough rate to maintain the appropriate level of chemical in here. So this is why you will see these sweet little things. Each one of these has a sight glass. And on top of that, it has this sweet little floating red ball in there. That helps, well, it just makes it easier to see one. But that's one of the things we'll do when we're cleaning a bright tank, a fermenter, we'll be pumping out, driven by the skid, and then we'll be returning with the separate separate pump, something similar that you see down there that I have recirculating a beer right now. That's kind of the ins and outs of it. And then here in just a second, I'm going to show you the end of this cleaning cycle and then how we rinse this out. Okay, so we have hit 20 minutes on our circulation for our blow off hose. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna stop the pump. And that means all the liquid in the system has stopped moving. I have to provide a source for my pump and I don't, no longer want it to be the caustic. So I'm gonna close that, but then I'm gonna come back here to the city water and I'm going to open that because I'm going to rinse this whole system. And so right now city water is running in through without pump assistance because it has its own pressure. And right here, I can feel this return coming back here to the caustic tank and it is still hot. Once that temperature starts to drop, I will close the return to the, uh, to the caustic pot right here and start returning city water to the drain in order to further rinse those lines. And I just hit that. You can see water returning to the drain here. Wapa. I'm going to rinse that until that return water is pH neutral. If this was a situation where I was going to be also running acid and potentially parasitic acid afterward, I would do a similar process. I would rinse through and then I would close my city water, open either my acid or my parasitic acid, whatever, whatever chemical is next. I would open that source, start the pump, start dumping the cold water through to the drain until I can start reharvesting the actual chemical back to the tank. All right. That's the main idea of what we're doing with the CIP skid. The CIP skid helps to save time, chemical and manual labor for your workers. And especially when it's set up as well as this is, it's a very, very convenient thing to use. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure if you have any questions to drop them below and I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you feel as if you got any value out of the video, please like and subscribe. There are also other videos that you can watch. They're going to maybe be over here or over here. Appreciate you watching.